this is um, 2021 graduation dress code requirements. Um, I'm just kind of going to go through. Ah, let me get off of that. I'm going to just kind of go through and talk about them um, just to lay them out for you. There's a lot of other information about graduation that I know you're waiting for. We do have a meeting on Friday um, with central office about like how many tickets you'll get, how many guests you can have, how you go about registering for those, um, that kind of stuff, times and that sort of thing. So I'm not really gonna hit any of that today. All I'm hitting today is just, what are you supposed to wear to graduation? Um, because I just really felt like we didn't need to put that off any longer. I know that a lot of you are starting to to figure out what you're going to wear, buy dresses and that kind of thing. And I want you to know what the guidelines are because they are pretty specific. We have a very traditional graduation ceremony and part of a traditional graduation ceremony involves uniformity and, and um, you know, kind of very almost formal attire, um, that kind of thing. And so it um, this is we want you to be clear what the expectations are. Um, as I get into this, I will say that, you know, these are not necessarily my expectations. These are not my rules. These are not things I came up with. These are things that entire groups, committees, um, historically, you know, magnets, graduation committees over the years have come up with. And these things have been in place the entire time um, that magnet has been around. And so um, the graduation expectations have not really changed um, because we do want to ensure a certain level of, of um, reverence because, you know, it's a time for everyone to be honored for their accomplishments. And it is a big accomplishment. And so it is somewhat of a, a solemn um, yet happy um, occasion. And so we want to treat it with the respect that it deserves. And one of the ways that we show that respect is by adhering to certain, um, you know, expectations regarding dress code. Um, also, I just wanted to, to throw out there and y'all know, if you know me at all, you know that I, I believe very much in just being straightforward and, and blunt about things. And um, so um, if for some reason you feel like that you um, are diametrically opposed to um, the graduation dress code or you don't feel like that you um, want to adhere to the dress code um, or something like that, then of course, feel free to come talk to me or Mr. Ilgen Fritz or whoever. Um, but if we still can't work something out, you know, then graduation is not a requirement. You do not have to attend graduation to receive your diploma. Um, graduation is an event that the school holds to honor those who have, um, you know, achieved this, this honor, who have, who have reached this point, but it's not something that you have to attend. So please don't feel like that, um, you know, you have to, you have to adhere um, to these to these rules if you don't want to. If if you truly don't want to, then that's an option that you can you can definitely pursue. Okay, I'm just throwing that out there for you. That um, if you feel like you don't want to get in in line with the dress code expectations, then not participating is an option. Um, and and that's totally fine. We won't judge you. <laughs> you know, do you? Um, okay, so I'm just going to very quickly, as quickly as I can go over the expectations and stuff just to put it out there. And then if you have questions, you can see me in E107 um, and I'll be more than happy to help you in any way that I can. We'll figure out um, exactly what you need to know and how we can we can help you, okay? Um, so this, I wanted to start with this picture because it does show sort of the setup of what, um, what graduation day will look like. This is the one that was held in August for the class of 2020 um, with social distancing in place and that sort of thing. And so this is pretty much what you can expect. Um, I don't really know that the setup will be exactly the same, but I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty close. Um, okay, so um, as you may or may not know, I'm recording this on Tuesday, so hopefully you will be watching it on Wednesday when you um, are scheduled to get your cap and gown from uh, Mr. Johnson from Graduate Sales. Um, he was coming at lunch. He'll be here at lunch on Wednesday to hand out um, gra uh, caps and gowns to anyone who has paid their balance in full. Uh, if you haven't paid your balance in full, you can still get your cap and gown, but you need to you have to pay him the difference um, in order to get it. When lunch is over and he leaves, he will leave with me the caps and gowns of anyone who has who has finished paying their balance, and I will have those in my room. So if you didn't make it by on um, lunch shift or something like that, then you can see me in E107 to get those things. Um, so I just have a few a few um, few little 
little things to go through. Um, when you get your gown, it's a good idea when as soon as you get home to go ahead and take it out of the package, hang it up, let the wrinkles and stuff start falling out. Um, it's going to be really wrinkled because it's been folded up in that package for a long time. Um, it, um, if as we get closer to graduation, the wrinkles haven't come out and you feel like you need to hit it with an iron, that's fine. I would do it on low and I would put something between the iron and my gown, like a pillowcase or a, um, a uh, towel or something like that, or ideally use like a steamer or something like that. The gowns are made of sort of a polyester type material and they do scorch very easily. So don't use like a high temperature iron or anything like that on it. Um, please take the gown out before graduation day. Don't put it in the back of your car and leave it there and, and take it out on the way to graduation. Um, because then if you're missing something or um, if you're a wrinkled mess, you'll have no way of kind of fixing that before graduation. Okay. All of our gowns are red. We require everybody to buy a new gown every year so that they come out of the same run um, and that they all are the exact same shade. Very often the shade is the same as it was the year before, but there's not really a guarantee unless we make sure that they all come out of the same order. Um, so yeah, um, and it says no attachment to either cap or gown is permitted. And that kind of goes into the next little slide, which is something um, that we're asked every year. So, and that is about, um, decorating the caps. We do not allow decorating of caps at Magnet. Um, maybe one day in the future we will, but you know, that day has not arrived yet. Right now, um, this is not something that the committee has um, voted to allow. And so even though they're really cute and I really like them, um, you cannot adorn your cap um, that you're going to wear to graduation. Um, if you do show up with a cap that is um, decorated, you will not be able to wear it during graduation. If we have extras, which we usually have a couple, um, then we will be happy to give you a, um, an extra one and let you wear that. If we don't have extras um, and you can't, you know, um, you know, undecorate it somehow, then um, you won't be able to participate. Um, so the caps and gowns, while they're adorable, they're going to have to be a no. So no decorating your caps and gowns. Um, no cute little sayings or anything. Okay, um, the dress code is divided up um, because of just differences in um, styles of clothing and stuff for different genders. And um, it's divided into ladies and men. The first one, ladies can wear, you have a few more options. Um, most of you will wear a black dress. Um, you can also are allowed to wear like a white shirt and black skirt. You're allowed to wear a white shirt and black slats. Um, those are all those are all fine. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you wear is solid colored. It, I mean, it's solid black. It's not black with like white flowers or something like that on it because patterns and things will show through the gown in the sunlight. Um, and so that will, that will not look right. Um, you want to make sure that it is solid colored. Um, it says the hem length for dresses and skirts should be roughly knee length. Um, ideally your, your, um, dress or skirt shouldn't show under your gown, but also if your, if your gown, um, the, the slit in the front, it comes up high, you want that to kind of be covered by a dress. I mean, you know, we want to be modest, um, you know, during the ceremony. So ideally your dress will not show above or below your gown. Um, the pants of course will, but you know, skirts and things like that, ideally, um, unless it's, you know, you are wearing long skirts for like religious reasons or something like that, which is totally fine. And it'll look totally fine if you do, um, then ideally it would be like knee length. Okay. Um, shoes, females also have a little bit more, um, of wiggle room in the shoe department because there are so many different styles of shoes. Um, we ask that you not wear um, spiky or skinny heels um, because there is so much walking, so much standing around. Um, if we are dealing with a field situation where you could, you know, sink down into the field, even though it's turf, um, you know, those heels can catch on that. The stage is a put together stage. It's not a permanent stage. And so it has scenes and things where it is put together. So you want to be real um, aware of that when you're picking out the shoes that you're going to wear at graduation. Personally, I think the shoes are probably the most important thing because it needs to be something that you can walk in, that you can stand in for long periods of time. Um, because of social distancing, you know, the, the, the distance that you have to travel for each 
step of the ceremony from getting to your seat to getting up to get your diploma to getting back to your seat, all of those distances are far longer um, than they traditionally would be. So just be aware of that and, and make sure that you wear something comfortable enough to really um, to, to function well for you. The actual, if you're looking at the screen, the actual wording says that you must wear black shoes only. Shoes must be flat without a point to the heel. This is necessary because of the extensive amount of walking, flat sandals and wedges are permitted, but must be black. Shoes cannot have ostentation decoration, ostentatious decorations, bows, spikes, flowers, no boots or booties or anything that laces up the leg. Um, it, none of that, okay? Um, just your basic pair of, of comfortable, black, nice shoes. Um, think of things you might wear to like an interview or to church or to some kind of like more, more dressy event. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, over there on the like no side, it says avoid long dresses. Garments should be uh, solid. No leggings, jeans, formal or informal attire is permitted. Don't wear the white collar that comes with your gown. Um, there will be, this will be down in your um, package probably. It's a little piece of white fabric that attaches to the gown. You don't have to worry about that. You don't need that. Um, you want the gown just exactly how it is without, you know, attaching anything to it. Okay. Um, here are just some pictures of just some simple black dresses. I would caution you, don't go spend a bunch of money on a, um, you know, really fancy black dress. It's not going to show over your gown anyway. Um, you know, don't kind of, you know, cause yourself more trouble by wear, trying to wear something that's super tight or super fancy or super formal or uncomfortable um, because it's not going to show over your gown anyway. And it's really better for you to be um, comfortable and able to move around and stand for a long time and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about the end of May. So it's going to be, you know, pretty hot outside. And um, so you want to be as, as cool and comfortable as you can while still being kind of dressy. Um, so these all would be, of course, you know, perfectly acceptable um, things to wear under a dress. And if you notice about one of these, this is a, well, these two really are both very casual um, dresses, but they fit the guidelines just fine. And you're not going to see them over your gown anyway. I mean, you're not going to see the dress, you know, because you're going to have a gown over it anyway. Um, shoes wise, these are just some pictures of shoes we've been asked about in the past and um, the kind of things we've seen kids wear and that kind of thing. Just so you can see all of these would be perfectly acceptable. Um, probably a good choice. If you're going to go for a higher heel, you want to make sure that it's a little bit thicker um, and that's going to make it more comfortable to stand in and to walk in and that kind of thing. Um, boys, y'all's is a little bit more straightforward. Um, you must wear a white collared shirt button down. It can be long sleeve or short sleeve, but it must be a button down white shirt and black dress trousers. That doesn't mean black jeans or black corduroys or anything like that. What we consider black dress trousers. Um, so think like khakis, but black. Um, a tie is required. It can be a traditional necktie or it can be a bow tie um, in a dark color. Um, it's also fine if you want to wear a red tie. Um, you know, we don't get super picky about the color of the tie. We just ask that it not be anything super distracting. Um, I would not wear a jacket. It's going to be hot. You won't be able to see it. So even if you decide to wear like a suit or something, leave the jacket at home. Um, boys, for your shoes, um, black dress shoes. That doesn't mean sneakers or athletic shoes, sandals, Crocs, any of that kind of stuff, okay? Black dress shoes, the whole shoe needs to be black. Um, you know, it was, wasn't a whole lot of pictures out there to show. Um, a white shirt, a dark tie of some kind, black pants, black shoes, okay? Boys shoes, um, these like loafer type shoes are pretty popular. Um, you know, I would say any of these would be perfectly acceptable. These are kind of the don'ts, the just say no, the, you know, these are not acceptable for anybody. Um, no Crocs, no flip flops. Actually for girls, no shoe that flips up when you walk. So you need it to be attached to your foot, either with a strap or, or a sandal type situation or something like that. Nothing that flips when you walk. Um, no like kitten heels, no, um, you know, really, really tall pointy type shoes, no boots, no um, tennis shoes, nothing like that. So we're going for very sedate, very, um, you know, structured business type um, attire. Okay. Um, last, this is really 
the last thing, um, stoles. The only stoles and stuff that are permitted are the ones given by CMHS. Um, those we only honor honor societies. National, they have to be nationally recognized honor societies. Um, and there's a list here. And if you qualify for one of these, you already know it. You've already dealt with the sponsors of those organizations. Um, also, like by literacy, community service, the ACT and Work Keys Achievement Cords, um, Magna Cum Laude and Summa Cum Laude are. Um, I think it's Magna Cum Laude and just Cum Laude. I can't see because this thing's in the way. But um, those things are also um, get sold by the school. Um, so you won't know until really close to graduation, you know, um, about the last couple. And then those, Mr. Bottoms is the person to talk to about those. Um, but you can't just show up in, you know, whatever random cords you, you know, want to wear um, because we only allow those that are recognized um, by magnet. And then um, if for some reason you're having trouble with any of these dress code um, requirements, you don't have something or you need to borrow something or, you know, we can help you get what you need to make sure that you're dressed appropriately for graduation. Um, I will say that there are, there will be people there who are in charge of enforcing dress code and making sure that we all look um, our best on the day of. So just be aware of that. Um, and, um, you know, if you have questions and stuff, please come see me and I'll be happy to, to, if I don't know the answer, try to find out the answer for you. But that's, that's pretty much it. It's very straightforward. There's not a lot of wiggle room um, in the dress code. So if you, I'm going to try to print this up for you and um, give it to you when you get your cap and gown tomorrow so that you have it in printed form. Um, we also have on April 30th, the Senior Panoramic and Field Day, and we're going to talk to you all about some other kind of end of the year um, things that are coming up. So just, you know, stay tuned for more information about that. And I'll also get out to you any more information about graduation as I get it. Um, I should get some on Friday when we go to this meeting. So if you have any questions, see me. Otherwise, thank you.